In this video, we're going to learn about the divergence test that can help us in some cases determine if a series is divergent. So for any given series, if we take the limit of a general term that defines that series and find that this limit does not exist, I should um, add here that it also includes the case when it's infinity or equals infinity. Or if that limit exists, but it's a non-zero number. Well, then in all those cases, the series is divergent. And then think this way. Well, if it, let's say, limit equals infinity, right? So it means that terms of that sequence are getting infinitely large. And if we keep adding numbers that are growing and getting bigger and bigger, well, then it makes sense that this, the sum is going to be infinity. Or let's say we know that terms of the sequence um, approach some kind of non-zero number. Um, let's say approach 5. Well, it means that we will be adding same thing. We're going to be adding bigger and bigger and bigger number. So the sum will be infinity. So in all those cases, the series is divergent. Um, however, the only remaining case we have left is when limit equals 0. It means that terms of the sequence, they approach zero. Well, actually, in this case, we can't say anything about the series. So this case is inconclusive for the divergence test. And um, it says here that we know nothing about the convergence or divergence of the series. So that means that another test must be used. This is how the divergence test works. Let's try two examples. In this first example, well in both of them, we need to determine whether the series is convergent or divergent. And if it's convergent, then we need to find its sum. So according to this test, once again, we have to take a limit of this general term a sub n. So this is a sub n. Let's find its limit as n goes to infinity. n squared over n squared minus 2n plus 5. So how do we find limit here? Well, this is a rational function. And one of the methods for determining limit of a rational function is to divide every single term in the numerator and the denominator by the variable with the highest power. So variable here is n. The highest power among all present powers is 2. So its limit is n approaches infinity. And now n squared I'll divide by n squared over, and in, in the denominator it's going to be n squared over n squared minus 2n over n squared, and then plus 5 over n squared. Then I will simplify it. I'll get, in the numerator, I'll get just 1. In the denominator, the first term is also 1. Then it's going to be, if I divide out n, it's going to be minus 2 over n, and then plus 5 over n squared, like that, right? And now I'm ready to apply that limit. So um, as n approaches infinity, these two terms will approach 0, right? As the denominator gets infinitely large, the overall fraction becomes very, very small, so it approaches 0. And that means that limit will be equal 1 over 1. That is 1. Okay? So we found limit. It equals 1. What kind of com conclusion do we make? Which case is that? Well, that's this first case, right? Limit exists. So it, it, that's this case. Limit exists, but it's non-zero. So this is not equal to 0, obviously not equal to zero and that means that the series is divergent the series is divergent and that's going to be the answer so this is how this test works let's try it with the second example the second example is um, the series um, in which we have square root of 2 to the power negative k to apply the divergence test, we need to set up the limit. Limit as, well, in this case, k. 
it goes to infinity of square root of 2 to the power negative k. To help me find this limit, I will switch from the negative power to the positive power. So limit as k approaches infinity of 1 over square root of 2 to the power k. And um, now I can see as, as the denominator is growing and approaching infinity, right? So power is approaching infinity. It means that the denominator is approaching infinity. The fraction itself will approach zero. So limit equals zero. And what kind of conclusion do we make in this case when limit is zero? Well, that is the second case. If limit of this general term, a sub n, equals zero, then we know nothing about the convergence or, or divergence of the series, well, at least based on this test. And we need to try another test. So we'll say the divergence test is inconclusive in this case. Is inconclusive. So we need to try something different. And now as I look at that series, I actually am noticing that it's um, also geometric series, right? So if I once again write it as um, one over square root of two to the power k, right? I can also actually put it as I can write it as 1 over square root of 2 to the power k. And yeah, that's a geometric series. Um, since k starts at 0, we don't have to have power k minus 1. We actually need to leave it as power k. And that means that the common ratio is 1 over square root of 2, r is the common ratio. And what can we say about the common ratio? We can see that the common ratio is between negative 1 and 1, right? And that means that this geometric series converges. So therefore, the series is convergent. And we determine that by observing that it's um, actually a geometric series and uh, using its test. Well, according to the question, if series is convergent, we need to find its sum. And we know that when we deal with geometric series, it's pretty easy, easy to do because we have this formula um, a over 1 minus r. Remember, a is the constant that stands next to um, the common ratio in its power. Well, I don't see any constant here. It means that it's 1. 1, that's a. And then in the denominator, it's going to be 1 minus r. So it's 1 over square root of 2. r. Next, I'm going to combine terms in the denominator. So the LCD is square root of 2. That means that I'll have square root of 2 minus 1 over square root of 2. And then as I divide, I'll have to multiply 1 by the reciprocal of the denominator. So I'll get, okay, down here, I'll get 1 times square root of 2 over square root of 2 minus 1, right? Reciprocal of that. And then technically, I would not want to leave any radicals in the denominator, so I'll need to rationalize that. To rationalize, I just have to multiply by the conjugate expression. So it's square root of 2 plus 1. And that gives me, okay, I'm distributing, distributing square root of 2 in the numerator. So that becomes 2 plus square root of 2. And in the denominator, I'm applying the uh, difference of two squares formula. So it's square of the first term, which is just 2 minus the square of the second term, so minus 1. And that is just 1. So um, the denominator is 1. 
right? That means that the final answer is 2 plus square, uh, square root of 2. So we determined that the series is convergent. We couldn't use the divergence test. It was inconclusive, but we applied the uh, geometric series test. And then since it was convergent, we were able to find its sum by using the formula for geometric series, a over 1 minus r. That's the sum of the geometric series. So these are the examples of how the divergence test can be used to determine whether series is divergent.